Here we are in section 2.3, problem number 8, and this problem states to use the graph of f to determine where f of x is greater than 0 for part a and where f of x is less than 0 for part b. A recall is that f of x is equal to y, so when we ask f of x greater than 0, it is the same as saying when y is greater than 0, and when we say f of x less than 0, it is the same as saying y is less than 0. So in our problem, they give us this graph and this button. If you click on it, it gives you this pop-out graph. And this pop-out graph becomes helpful because it gives us a more clear view of where the graph crosses the x-axis from being greater than 0 to being less than 0. And that occurs at negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. And the regions where the graph is above the x-axis, I'm tracing in green. So we see this region is from negative 4 to negative 2. We see this region is from 0 to 2. And we see this region is from 4 to positive infinity. The parts of the graph that are less than 0, I'll trace in red. And we see that occurs from negative infinity to negative 4. Then again, from negative 2 to 0. And then a third time, from 2 to 4. So, for part A, we can say that f of x is greater than 0 for x such that it is negative 4 to negative 2 unioned with 0 to 2 unioned with 4 to positive infinity. Then we can do this again for part B and say f of x is less than 0 for x values such that they are from negative infinity to negative 4 unioned with negative 2 to 0 and unioned with 2 to 4. So we have expressed the intervals for the x values that make f of x greater than 0 in part a and that make f of x less than 0 in part b.